Good evening and thank you for joining us. These are uncertain times, but for tens of thousands of Canadians whose livelihoods have been affected by the COVID-19 crisis, there is some relief coming. The application process for the Canada Emergency Relief Benefit begins tomorrow. It should ease the financial strain as we wait for life to get back to normal. And that could take months. You only have to look at the latest rise in cases to see we are not out of the woods. There are more than 15,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 across Canada. About half are in Quebec, more than 7,900 cases there. That province reported its biggest single-day rise in cases, 947. Another 4,000 are in Ontario, which jumped by more than 400 cases overnight. Alberta has confirmed more than 1,100 infections, and B.C. has at least 1,200. Four provinces, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and Labrador are all reporting more than 200 cases each. Nearly 300 people have died from the illness, but at least 3,000 people have recovered. Millions of Canadians have been seriously impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, whether they've been laid off or had to stop working. The federal government begins accepting applications for the CERB tomorrow. David Aiken joins us now to break down who this will help and why hundreds of thousands won't qualify. David? Robin, the applications for the Canada Emergency Response Benefit opens up Monday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern, and the government expects 3 million Canadians will apply in the next seven days alone. The CERB is a flat rate benefit of $500 a week. To be eligible, it doesn't matter how much you made, but you must have made at least $5,000 in income over the last 12 months. You must have lost all your employment income for 14 consecutive days anytime after March 15th, and you have to be an employee, self-employed, or a contract worker. The CERB will also replace employment insurance for the 2.1 million Canadians who applied for EI after March 15th. And for those Canadians, no matter how much money you might have qualified for under EI, you will automatically get $500 a week, the flat rate, no need to reapply. For millions, the CERB will mean a raise, but for many, it may mean a pay cut from the maximum EI benefit of $573 a week down to that flat rate of $500 a week. If you choose to direct deposit, you will get a first payment within three to five days. If you choose to receive your benefit by mail, you'll get money within the next 10 days. But hundreds of thousands will not qualify for the CERB, including those who had applied for or were receiving EI before March 15th, including those whose EI benefits are expiring. You will stay in the EI program. Those still working, but working only a few hours a week, any earned income disqualifies you from the entire $500 a week CERB. College and university students who have had summer job offers cancelled will not get the CERB. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Sunday Ottawa plans to help students soon. This is an issue that we are very, very aware of, from uh, modifications to the Canada Summer Job Program to looking at uh, direct support for students. We know that we need to do more for young people as they come out of university. In the meantime, the government is ready to pay out the GST rebate on Thursday. And this rebate has been doubled to $400 per person or $600 per couple. You can get information on that payout plus the CERB at Canada.ca. Robin? David, another issue is face masks and this battle between the White House and Ottawa over the presidential order not to send the crucial N95 masks to Canada. How did the Prime Minister respond to that issue today and what was his tone? Well, Trudeau is still looking for a negotiated resolution, but Trump's move has angered a whole lot of people in Canada, including the Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. That in a time of crisis, you don't stop being human. In 2001, our province stepped up in the biggest way possible. When the United States was in crisis after the terrorist attacks in New York, Newfoundland and Labrador accepted with open arms thousands of people from around the world. So today to say that I am infuriated with the recent actions of President Trump of the United States is an understatement. I cannot believe for a second in a time of crisis that President Trump would even think about banning key medical supplies to Canada. 
Now, Trudeau and Trump, by the way, have not yet talked about this. They're still leaving it up to their officials for now. Robin? David Aiken in Ottawa. Thanks, David. One of the biggest areas of concern in Quebec, a quarter of all nursing homes in the province have confirmed cases of COVID-19. It's hitting home for so many families with loved ones in long-term care. And as Amanda Delawicki reports, they're weighing whether it's safer to get them out. Timothy Pereira placed his aging aunt in a Montreal nursing home just last week. The 72-year-old suffers from severe disabilities and needs professional care. But her residence has a COVID-19 outbreak. It's really tough to imagine that maybe the decision that I made to bring her there could end up with her dying. Doctors also told Pereira his aunt would likely get better emergency care at home. The doctor actually told me to come and pick her up and bring her home uh, and that she would be in, in a better situation. And I thought that was really disturbing. Pereira's situation is becoming a worrying, all too familiar refrain in Quebec. A staggering one quarter of all of Quebec's nursing homes have COVID-19 outbreaks. 60% of Quebec's 94 COVID-19 related deaths occurred in seniors' residences. The government has adopted stricter measures like banning visitors, but they're also changing policy quickly. On Thursday, Quebec's public health director said seniors were too vulnerable if they left nursing homes and went home. Friday, the government flip-flopped. So we did that, we discussed it very quickly yesterday, and we decided this is the way to go. Given the dire situation in seniors' residences, some experts say going home is the best option. If you have a healthy senior right now who's in a residence, I do strongly encourage people to go get them, find somewhere um, where it's going to be a little bit safer and where they can have a bit more attention paid to them. Many don't have that choice. Both Renee Menard's parents are in homes. She's worried she won't see them again. She is locked up in there. She can't even go out for a walk. We can't take her home because there are cases in the building, so we can't take her home. Um, so we're very worried. And with deaths rising each day, families are terrified their loved one could be next. Amanda Jelowicki, Global News, Montreal.